people! Ginny Metherill, I'm a fourth generation witch of Irish descent, and today's video is part of my new series on elemental witchcraft. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know what the elements are, they are the earth, the air, the wonderful heat of the fire, and of course, water. So I'll put up the first video I've done in this series up here for you to watch, which is on fire, because it was appealing to the pyromaniac in me. But this one is all about the most powerful of all the elements, and that is air. Now this seems a bit strange to say it's most powerful, but it really is. Air controls and can harness every single one of the other elements. There really is nothing more uplifting than the air flowing around you. So for example, the breath of a newborn baby on your cheek, putting your head outside of a car window whilst it's traveling along and feeling it rush past your face like spaniel. Brilliant, very, very energizing. Or even standing on top of a cliff and leaning into the wind and making your mother, i.e. me, terrified on your behalf. So air, is extremely powerful. It can rouse a flame and it can put out a flame. Think of blowing out a candle, for example, or igniting the fire to make it rage harder. It can erode the earth. Think of the Death Valley erosion, those huge stacks of wind eroded earth. Brilliant and so beautiful. It can raise the waves and form them into a huge tidal wave skyscraper high and yet it can gently dance underneath the wings of a butterfly and lift it through the air. It is most powerful and aggressive, yet gentle and kind. It holds power over all the other elements, and yet is almost impossible to control. We can harness it sometimes through wind turbines, etc. We can't control it. No one can. It is such a powerful and such a big part of our lives that we don't really appreciate it often as a witch. So what I want to do today is to show you two different spells that you can use in your daily witchcraft to harness some of the power of air. So there is a very famous phrase called the winds of change and I'm sure you have heard of this. This means that change will happen with the wind. As the wind changes direction, so will your path. If you're looking to bring something new into your life, this is a great way to ensure it. If you're not afraid of change, it doesn't scare you. Uh, you don't mind having your routine disrupted, which is very me, I'm very like that. I get bored very, very easily. But this spell will bring that to your life. If you'd like to change your job, you could like to change your partner. You could use this spell to do that. Bored of them? Well, let's move on. If you want to change your viewpoint or your hairstyle even, this spell is a wind of change spell, which will help you to bring about the change that you desire. The spell should be done by candlelight. You will need a piece of paper and a pen, and the pen should be in a particular color. And here is what those colors should be. Use a brown pen for home, green is money, blue is health, pink, love, red for employment, black for miscellaneous, orange for legal, and purple for friends. Using the appropriate pen, write down whatever it is you wish to change. As you can see, I am after a change of luck. Hold the paper in your hands and speak the change out loud. Make sure that you do it very clearly because fuzzy ideas lead to fuzzy results. And you don't want a fuzzy result on something this important. And finally, fold up your piece of paper and put it somewhere where you won't see it for a while, somewhere safe. Then when the change is affected, you can get the piece of paper out and look at it. Good luck. Let me know how you get on with that spell. I'd love to know what you want to change in the comments below. The second spell we're going to look at is a spell for your aura. And we're going to use the air to test and feel and change your aura. Now, for those of you who don't know what your aura is, we all exude our animal magnetism and energy beyond our skin. And there is differing versions of how far your aura comes out. Normally it stays pretty close in, but you can expand your aura and let it reach out further than you would normally have it. 
for example, you would do this naturally if you walked into a party and went, hello everybody. That's expanding your aura out naturally. Now this is quite an esoteric spell. It doesn't need anything apart from some candles and time and space, but it is quite difficult. So bear with me and keep at it because you will get it eventually. Everyone does. I've never known anyone not be able to feel their aura once they have started. We're going to cast a circle using candles. So it's a good idea to light your candles first and then you can place them in your circle however you feel fit. It doesn't matter what candles you use, just as long as they're lit. Put my circle casting video on the screen for those who don't know how to. Place your candles, making sure that there is a candle for north, south, east and west, and the rest around those points. Using your wand, now cast the circle, ensuring that nothing bad can happen within this circle. Sit comfortably within the circle and take a moment to calm your mind. Using your hands, push away from your body against the air and feel that air on the palms of your hand. And now turn your hand around and bring it towards your body and you should feel a time where the air changes in its volume and intensity. It can sort of thicken slightly. And this is the start of your aura. Using your hands, you can now change your aura and pat your aura into however you feel you need it to be set. So I'm putting a fairly marshmallowy type aura around myself at the moment. I change my aura to suit the situation that I'm in. If I am in a, a demon situation, which I know that I might be going into, I often have, for, which works for me, an aura that feels like marshmallow. So it's a bit bouncy, but slightly, you know, tough. So things tend to bounce off me. If I am in a really bad situation, I tend to have a very, very hard aura, a bit like an egg. And if you imagine me encased in an egg, it's very slippy and smooth and nothing can sort of grab onto it. You have different auras for different situations. I normally, when I'm going into a crowd, because I pick up too much of other people's vibes, I normally put myself into this very shiny diamond bubble that looks beautiful, but reflects off everything from it. So you can't really see me because I'm in a sort of diamond bubble and that protects me from picking up other people's bad vibes and emotions, which I suffer from quite a lot, and I can find it really difficult going out in public unless I have prepared myself to do so. My aura will, will change naturally depending on my state. Um, so I had every single penny that I possessed taken out of my bank account, plus all the overdraft facility and sent off overseas somewhere, and I'm never gonna see that money again. And slightly, our Christmas has been canceled because we don't have any money left. So anyway, this was an incredibly stressful situation to find myself in. So at the moment, I'm finding that my aura is contracting in and hardening in it. I'm trying to cover myself naturally. And actually, that's not very good for me. What I am doing at the moment is I have to remember to release my aura. Because, you know, when bad things hit you, you do contract in, it's always best to be slightly more open. You do put yourself out there, but you learn how to deal with it. The first time I did this spell, my aura felt, before I did the spell, it felt like I was pushing my hand through sand. You know, that feeling so it sort of trickled around. And then, when I finished the spell, it felt like I was pushing against marshmallow. How does yours feel? Let me know in the comments below because it's really interesting that everyone has a different feel to their aura at different times and I'd be fascinated to know what yours feels like. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.